Hey there, this is Bose's SoundLink Flex Bluetooth speaker. I apologize for being a little late reviewing it, but I got waylaid by the AirPods third generation and Beats Fit Pro earbuds reviews. But this guy should definitely be on your radar if you're looking for a portable wireless speaker. It's $149, sounds really good for its size, and may just be the best compact wireless speaker out there right now. Let's talk about that. Okay, so when it launched, Bose made some bold claims about the speaker's sound quality, particularly its bass performance. I think the exact quote was something along the lines of, it has astonishing bass that you can feel in your chest. There's a bit of marketing hyperbole going on there, but I gotta say it mostly lives up to the hype. As I said, for its size, it does pack some really good punch, but before I dig into sound quality compared to some other top Bluetooth speakers, I'm gonna go over its design and features. It's available in three color options, black, white smoke, and stone blue, and the speaker is IP67 dust and waterproof. It also floats, and that's an important feature if you're in the habit of dropping your Bluetooth speakers in your pool or another body of water. I personally wouldn't want to drop it anywhere, but Bose says that thanks to its soft silicone back and powder-coated steel grill that won't peel or flake and is resistant to corrosion and UV light, it's designed to be pretty durable and can survive small drops. That silicone finish is indeed soft to the touch, but I'll note that it does attract a bit of dust and lint and it shows more on the black version. I like the speaker in blue, but the white one was a close second. There are buttons on top for controlling playback, which is always good to have, although most people will just use their phone as a remote to play music. One thing that's missing is an audio input, so you can't connect an audio device via an auxiliary cable. This is strictly a Bluetooth speaker. Bose's SoundLink Micro also delivers impressive sound for its tiny size. This does feel like it's in the same family, but is almost twice as big, weighing just over a pound or 0.45 kilograms, and it sounds significantly better than the Micro with better battery life. For some reason, it used the older Bluetooth 4.2 instead of 5.0. I didn't have any problems with connectivity. It was generally rock solid, but for those looking for extended wireless range, this is only listed as having the standard Bluetooth range of 30 feet or 10 meters. Battery life is rated at 12 hours at moderate volume levels, which is pretty good. It's basically got twice the battery life of the SoundLink Micro and charges via USB-C instead of micro USB. The speaker is designed to be propped up horizontally, laid down flat, or hung vertically by its integrated loop. Bose shows it in pictures with a carabiner attached to the loop, but no carabiner is included. You have to supply your own, but it's good that there's a loop and it does seem pretty sturdy. The speaker's sound is automatically optimized according to the position you have it in. I tended to keep it upright, but it does have a built-in microphone so you can use it as a speakerphone, and you may want to lay it down flat if you're using it as a speakerphone with a few people sitting around it. It works pretty well picking up your voice and it puts out a lot more sound than your phone's tiny speakers. Walking away from the speakerphone, how do I sound overall? So initially you said your voice was strong and as you're walking away, the speaker's still doing a good job of focusing on your voice. How far are you now from the speaker? I'm probably a good, I don't know, eight feet away or so. Okay. Ten, I, feet. Ten feet now. Yeah, your voice is starting to become a little faint, but the speaker's still doing a good job of picking up your voice. Bose says it can fill a living room with sound. From my test, I'd say it would have to be a relatively small living room. It can only output so much sound. And to be clear, this is a mono speaker, but the key with it is that it does manage to produce more bass than you think it can. Also, it avoids distorting at higher volumes and delivers good clarity in the treble and mid-range with overall well-balanced sound that's only slightly bass forward. Did you see the Messiah on the sea? Did you see him riding into town? Did you see his dusty feet and palm leaves on the ground? You're going to be immediately impressed by how much sound it throws off and decent sound at that, but it can't totally see it being a small speaker. The soundstage only gets so wide and it can sound a little constrained with more complicated music tracks that have a lot of instruments playing at the same time. To avoid distorting, certain frequencies do get ratcheted back just a little bit, particularly at higher volumes. I compared it to several other compact portable speakers. The one that seems to get compared to the most is the JBL Charge, which costs $180. The Charge is a bit bulkier speaker and puts out a little more sound. Its bass is bigger, but arguably boomier and more forward, so the mids where vocals lift can sound a little recessed. I think the Bose has a better overall tonal balance 
and the bass has more definition. I prefer the sound overall. Uh, just so you guys know that you can't tweak its sound like the JBL, both of these speakers lack EQ settings, so you have to go with their signature sounds. I thought it compared pretty favorably to the $179 Sonos Roam, which is also an excellent wireless speaker that has Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth and connects to your Sonos system at home. The Bose, however, is more straightforward to use because it's a Bluetooth only speaker. And comparing this to the UE Wonder Room 2, that's a $100 speaker that's also very good for its size. The Bose does deliver more depth and bigger body to its sound. Same is true for the Bang & Olufsen Bio Sound A1. I like that speaker a lot, but the Bose beat that one as well. I like it like that, been on this diet forever. Hey, you look like a snack. Our hands in the air. We wave them around. We touch in the sky. We jumping off the ground. Oh, you think they balling? That is what you call it. Quarter a million to... I'm a guinea for Barry. I'm a chicken and a Sally. It offered more full-bodied sound. However, the A1 does offer multi-point Bluetooth pairing, so you can pair it simultaneously with your phone and a computer. This model does not seem to have that feature. Some people have asked me how it sounds compared to Bose's canister-style Revolve speaker. That model's a bit more expensive and produces a bit more sound but it doesn't really sound any better, and I prefer the Flex's design. The larger Revolve Plus has the flex beat, but that speaker costs twice as much. You could buy two flexes for the same price, and that might not be a bad idea. That's because while the speaker sounds good as a single speaker, you get a big increase in sound quality when you pair two flexes together in stereo mode. I felt the same way about the Sonos Roam. You just get real stereo separation, and both the sound stage and bass seem so much bigger. As a pair, they sound like real speakers and indeed can fill a decent sized living room with sound. I should also note that you can link up the Flex with other Bose speakers in party mode. In other words, you can mix and match, but to get stereo sound, you'll need another Flex. I'll finish by saying that pricing for Bluetooth speakers has been a little weird these days with all the supply chain issues and chip shortages. And by weird, I mean that prices only seem to be going up and not much is on sale. So even though 150 bucks might sound like a lot for some people, it's a decent price for a top Bluetooth speaker and quite reasonable for Bose. As I said at the beginning, if you're looking for a portable Bluetooth speaker, the Flex should definitely be on your radar, if not at the top of your list. But let me know what you guys think and how the Flex might compare to your favorite Bluetooth speaker. Sound off in the comments section. And if you're interested in any of the products mentioned, check out the description below for links on where to find them. And you can get even more details in my text review on CNET. Lastly, if you found this video informative at all, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm David Carnet for CNET. Thanks for watching.